Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to all of you that were able to join me on this quick and impromptu live on a Monday afternoon. I'm in sunny Colorado. We are expecting some snow this week, and that just means it's heading to be winter time. Anyway, I thought I was browsing the groups, and if you're a member of the Brilliant in Brilliance group, you know that that's a fantastic group here on Facebook for getting um, help from your peers with uh, using the software and finding out questions that you may have. One of the questions that someone had asked today had to do with, they had Stitch Artist, so you need Stitch Artist to do this project, and they wanted to be able to take an existing design, maybe something they had added lettering to, and turn it into a patchwork block or an applique shape, or simply just put a blanket stitch square around it. Greetings, Eric. Glad that you could check in on my super duper fast quick live I thought I'd do today. So if you're checking in, you can, um, I see comments here. So you can, if you have any questions as I'm doing this, please feel free feel free to drop them in and hopefully we can answer them either live or after the fact. So I'm going to switch on over to our software, show you what it is that we want to create and show you how easy it is to do that. So here we go. I have, this is what it is that I wanted to create. It's a design. I want to put a blanket stitch around it and turn it into an applique shape. The design itself is something that I had digitized. It was in my stash and the BX is just a lettering object or the lettering is just an object that I added using a BX file. It's um, the Madison font from Linny Penny Embroidery Designs. It's absolutely adorable. It's nice and cute, tiny, and I thought it matched the design well. And then I quickly added my shape to it. So let me go into the software and start from scratch with a brand new design, show you how this is done. So I'm just going to take these two guys and I'm going to just copy them, go to a new design page, paste them in. So here we have our design on our screen. And if we wanted to say, uh, change this into uh, our quilt square. So First thing you must know is that you must be in create mode. So here I am. I've clicked on my create mode button. So I'm going to digitize and I'm in Stitch Artist level one. So you can see that this happens or this can be done in any level of Stitch Artist. From this quick shape mode tool that we have here, I'm going to choose the square shape because I want to draw a rectangular or a square shape around my um, embroidery design and this is just a super fast quick way of doing it. I'm going to position my mouse cursor in the upper left corner. Whoopsie. Got my fingers a little quickie here. I'm going to hold down my shift and my alt or my option key because I'm on a Mac and left click and drag which will create a perfect square into the size of my hoop. Release my mouse button and there I have my square. Um, as we, um, once I have my square shape, I need to set it to be an applique so that I can put that blanket stitch around it. So while I have it selected, I'm going to click on my applique tool here, which turns it into an applique shape. Now, as you notice in my preferences, it brings up the last stitches that I used many times, especially for those of you that have not create an applique before. It will show up on your screen as with the E stitch because that's the default and it does not have a fabric preview showing. So it just has the position stitch. If you want to do a trimmed applique, so you need the position and the material stitch, be sure that you choose that option here at the bottom. However, since I'm going to put a pre-cut square fabric down and I'm going to do a clean blanket stitch around it, or as it was, I don't need to have my material stitch. Now, the fabric preview, it has two functions. First of all, I also have essentials. 
which means when I, my fabric preview turned on, you can see that there's going to be a piece of fabric that is covering those stitches. So if I just were to leave this design as it is, and I wanted, and I sent it to the machine, the stitch file automatically is going to remove the hidden stitches because the fabric's covering everything underneath it. So all I would have at my machine is this blanket stitch with the running stitch around it. And that is not what we want. Now, if you're just going to stitch this as a, um, as just a, a placement stitch and there's going to be no position. So it's just going to be a decoration around the edges. You can turn off your position stitch and turn off your fabric preview. And then it's not going to, those stitches have, there's no fabric underneath them. So there's nothing that's going to be there. So if you wanted to stitch it last and there is no fabric, it's just decoration, boom, done, off to the machine. But if you are putting fabric in this, and you want to stitch first, like a traditional applique, I'm going to put my position stitch back in. I'm going to go up to my object pane here and select this design, right click on it and say, move first. Now, even if I have put my fabric preview down, you can see that it's going to stitch my material stitch, put the placement where the fabric is going to be, put the finishing stitch around it, then stitch my design on top of this, and there you have your applique stitch all the way done. Okay, everything's done quick and easy. Now I wanted to show one more trick. Oh, first of all, I have this set as an e-stitch. From my pull down menu, that's where I would choose the blanket stitch. And the stitch length and the stitch width, those are set to my preferences. You can adjust these to make those as you want them. I skipped that step, but I just noticed there's my blanket stitch, now I'm ready to go. Now, someone had asked, what if you wanted your little whip stitches, the blankets, to go in the, for, as opposed to going on the inside, you want it to be a decorative stitch and go on the outside. So it's not really going to be a um, holding down the applique in the traditional math method as well of like a stitch, but you wanted those little whips to go on the outside. I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to get that to happen. First of all, we have our object still selected here in the front, and I need to open it up. So I need to change it from a closed shape so that I can tell the software, hey, I want these little whips to go on the other side. So to open up this shape, I'm going to click on my little open button here, which is I like to refer this as the tomato tool because it kind of looks like a little cherry tomato to me. So while I have this selected, I'm going to click on the open shape. And what that does is allows you to grab one of the corners and you see how it can move it open. This is a vital step because for applique, it's expecting a closed shape so that those blankets are going interior. We're not using it as an applique. We want those whips to go on the back side of it. So I'm going to move it. You have to move it to open it just so that it's a part and you can move it back in so it's it looks proper again. But now, while you have it selected, in order to make it basically reverse itself or go backwards, go to the Create menu, choose Outline, and where it says Reverse Points, that basically tells the software to go into reverse. So I'm going to move this back up here to the top. So it's back in the beginning. And those little whips are outside my hoop. So I'm going to go and just resize it quickly by going back into the essentials mode by clicking on my little arrow key. This allows me to whoops go in here, grab a corner, hold down my shift key, resize it in evenly, center in. And there I have my design perfectly fit inside my hoop with my little whips going on the back side of it. Wasn't that fun? Quick, easy, and exciting. So hopefully you all got that. I saw that Eric put the link to Linny's, um, Linny Penny's Madison font that's available on our um in the comments there. I'll also add it into the description of this broadcast replay. And since I didn't see any questions pop up, I guess it made perfect sense to you guys. Like I said, it's quick and easy. What an easy way to create a quick applique design using Stitch Artist Level 1. 
Enjoy your afternoon, folks, and I will catch you online later. Take care. Thanks for joining me today.